Hi, Arrow. It's Liliana. How are you? Doing very well. It's nice to share a conversation with you because you are all about reaching out to young children and sharing beautiful stories of, of, of personal growth and, and, and basically personal acceptance. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here to share a little bit more about Nina's Familia with you. What What is the brainchild behind this? And because I, I, I can't stop watching it. I'm, I'm an adult and I'm watching this. I it, It's so entertaining. Well, you and me both, right? So obviously, you know, Coco Melon is a huge part of our life. Um, I'm a mom of a two-year-old and we love Coco Melon. We love, you know, JJ. We love JJ's family. Yep. We love his friends. And Nina is a favorite of my son, Santiago. He loves her. And Nina's Familia is exactly that. It is the first bilingual spinoff series from the Coco Melon franchise. And it's a beautiful series for so many reasons. But I think for me, it's because of the representation that it brings to the world, right? Seeing a multi generational Mexican American yep. family yep. on screen in the Coco Melon world is just beautiful. So Coco Melon's giving children the opportunity to see themselves maybe for the first time right but also giving them this platform to american mexican american stories and the way this series was brought to life was just so authentically beautiful. It is. It's very relatable because it is my life because of, of my my daughter, her husband. And now as my grandchildren are finding love in their heart, they're extending their lives out as well. So then it does become multi-generational as well as there's so many different cultures that are invited into this family now because we were open with them from day one. It absolutely does. And, you know, there was so much thought and care put into this series. You know, so when you watch the show, you're going to be able to to see, you know, different holidays that are specific to Latinx culture, right? Like Dia de los Muertos, which now is so popular. But growing up, I would talk about Dia de los Muertos and my friends were like, wait, what? What is that? And I'd be like, well, it's kind of like a Mexican Halloween, right? So now being able to see that on screen for children is, is incredible. And then also, you know, thinking about all those cultural touch points that are really important, like the food that you see on screen. What is Nina's family eating? What are they making in the kitchen together? What are the toys that are in their house? What's the music that's playing, right? And then also the visuals. Um, What does that Reyes house look like? All of these things were thought through. The detail is beautiful. And the Moonbug team led by Anthony Falcon, who's the creative lead on this series, was just, it's amazing. You know, this show was kind of almost co-designed with parents, right? Both at Moonbug and also through this massive survey and study that they did. You know, what do Latinx parents want to see for themselves, for their children in a show like this? Oh my God. You you just took me into my my, my daughter's house because you're right about what the food. Juan loves to cook food. He loves to celebrate it and and then he treats it like a (laughs) celebration. The way that they they treat the outdoors versus the indoors and how we celebrate Christmas together. That's what I think that's the reason why I'm tapping into this. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's so beautiful, you know, because this show isn't just for Latinx families. If anything, it's for families that aren't Latinx, right? It's bringing culture and tradition into your family through a new lens, through Nina's familia. And being able to share that globally is really incredible. And it's also an incredible tool to help parents teach Spanish to their children, to their family. I mean, and to themselves, you know, if you don't, I mean, I speak Spanish fluently, but I have friends, you know, who absolutely do not. And they're watching the show being like, oh my gosh, I learned so much just by watching this with my toddler. Yeah, yeah, because with with Juan and his family, he always wants them to learn from the street that language and not necessarily be, you know, oh, this is how they do it in school because you've got to be able to learn, learn to communicate on the street. Yeah, of course. In a really casual way, it's easy. It's fun. You know, it's a way to really appreciate the language yes. through through this show. One of the superstars of the show, though, is that music, because a lot of people assume that we know what's going on inside these households. But there is a wide variety of, of tastes in music. Yeah, well, you know, of course, with Coco Melon, you know that those three minute nursery rhymes are are, are so, so catchy. I find myself singing yeah. them when I'm not watching the show and when my toddler is not present. Uh, and so being able to bring that same style to Nina's Familia through different songs, right? Um, songs like Dale, 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 Estrellita, Donde Estas, you know, songs that I grew up singing mm-hmm. many, many, many years ago. I'm not going to say how many, but a long time ago when I was a toddler that my mom and grandmother taught me now. I get to share that with Santiago, and that's a really wonderful thing. One of the things that we've not talked about for listeners is that where can they find this? Because we are such an app-generated generation. It's it's like where can they find what, you know this this new show? 
Absolutely. Uh, you can find it on the Coco Melon YouTube channel. Yeah. It just launched on September 29th. Um, so you can watch it there, watch it at your, at your schedule, at your convenience, whenever you want. And the best part is there's new episodes dropping every single Friday. Wow. See, this is the kind of stuff that creates community as well as conversation. Is, is there going to be a website where they can go to when they have questions or they want to learn more than just the episode that was up on the YouTube channel? Absolutely. Cocomelon.com is like the hub and the source for all things Nina's Familia and of course Coco Melon. And you know, I'm gonna ask you this question. With with a show like this, there's gotta there has to be merchandise because I want I want to collect things <laughs> like this. We you and I've talked about this for a couple of years now. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I mean, there are several Nina dolls. There's like a squishy plushie. I call it a cuddle Nina. And then there's talking Nina, who, who my son is obsessed with. I had to like literally pry it out of his hands last night so I could put it on set with me here. He loves Nina and he loves this doll. So yes, tons of beautiful merchandise as well. There's going to be there's going to be so many people that are that are going to learn from this and it's going to open up so many doors. And what what I love is it, that it's being planted in a time where there's a lot of change going on in all four corners of this nation. And I love the fact that you guys are stepping forward with this and having this this interracial family and and bringing the stories forward. Yeah, I mean, I think props to Moonbug, right, for recognizing this. I mean, as parents, I think we want to show and expose our children to as much diversity and as mm-hmm. much culture as we can. And this is an amazing way to be able to bring that into your home, right? That's why I said it's not a show for Latinx families. It is, but it's a show for everyone. If you just want your children to have a larger awareness, and like you said, larger conversations about how beautifully diverse this world is, this is the perfect place to do that. Being out in public, I I really get the opportunity to talk with all people. And one of the things that I wish I could figure out a way to do and and to break down the walls is that someone who doesn't speak proper English, I mean, maybe they don't know it. Don't don't hide from me. Teach me your language and let's have conversations together. But it seems like there's a wall between the people right now and it's all based on language. Yeah, no. And I mean, language is just one way to communicate. Like people communicate through like warmth and food and and music, right? Like language is just one way to communicate. You can have a shared love of music. I mean, I think about Bad Bunny all the time, right? He sings in Spanish, yet all of my English speaking (laughs) friends are bouncing along to his song and downloading his music nonstop because just like language is a communication tool, so is food, so is music, so is art. Um, They're just expressions of culture. Oh my God, you just gave me a flashback to the song Gasolina from a few years ago because that song to me (laughs) broke down the walls. Everybody was singing Gasolina. (laughs) Exactly, it doesn't matter if you speak the language. You feel the love and you feel the warmth and you feel the culture or the cultura, as I like to say. So what else are you up to? Because, I mean, you are so creative and there's no way that you're stuck to one program. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I know I'm working on a tons of th- you know, a ton of things right now. I have a podcast. Um, it's called Becoming an Icon, also very rich in Latinx culture. It's the story of Latinx icons. So some of your favorite musicians like Gloria Stefan, yes. um, Ricky Martin, um, Bad Bunny, really telling their journey to becoming icons. Um, so I produce that and host that. That's a podcast that drops every Wednesday. You can catch it on I heart um, and then continuing to kind of, you know, build my audience and my fans on social media and, and teaching them about style and how to make it affordable and accessible. Oh, my God. See, you are all about the people. Please come back to this show in the future. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much for having me. You'd be brilliant today, OK? You as well. <laughs>